Well, my name is Rich from Nolan Engineering. I'm a licensed engineer in New York and a few other states. And today we're going to talk about notch drilled cut or damaged joist. We'll talk about what's allowed, what's the allowed notching and drilling in joist. And then we'll talk about some repairs to damaged or cut or notched joist. Thank you. First we'll talk about allowed drilling and notching. And this comes from the International Residential Code or the IRC which is uh, used in most states. First of all, you need to know the depth of your joist. It's the true depth. So this is a two by eight. A two by eight is actually seven and a quarter inches. A two by four can't be used for a joist, so we won't talk about that. Two by six is actually 5.5 inches. Two by eight, seven and a quarter inches. A two by 10 is nine and a quarter inches and a two by 12 is actually 11 and a quarter inches. So you need to know the true depth of the joist. You are allowed to notch the ends of your joist up to a, qu a quarter of the depth. Now that again is a true depth. So if you, you are allowed to notch the ends up to a quarter, sometimes that's necessary to fit it over a wall. You are allowed to notch the top and the bottom of the joist up to a sixth of the depth, which isn't very much. And the length of the notch can only be up to a third of the depth. So again, you can notch the top and bottom of the joist up to a sixth of the depth, and the length can't be more than a third. In the center third of your joist, you cannot have any notching. You can drill there, but you can't have any notching. Um, that's because the bending stress is maximum at the center of the joist, and they don't want any um, cuts at the top or the bottom. As far as holes go, you can drill a hole up to a third of the depth of the joist. And the diameter of the hole can be up to a third of the depth of the joist. If you need more than one hole, they can't be closer than two inches together. The top of a hole cannot be closer than two inches from the top of the joist. And the bottom of a hole cannot be more than two inches from the bottom of the joist. Holes are allowed um, anywhere in the joist, center of the ends, except for two inches of either end. You can't have any holes. I'll step over here. If you do notch the bottom of a joist, again, can only be up to a sixth of the depth, and the length can only be a third, but they recommend that you taper it um, to prevent cracking. If this were to be a sharp edge notch, you'll get some splitting or some cracking. So you could start your notch by drilling holes first so you have a round, rounded edge, or you could cut the notch at a taper. Um, so just in summary, no notching in the middle third of your joist. Holes can be a third of the depth of the joist. Notches can only be a sixth of the depth of the joist and you have to use the true depth of the joist. Now an engineer can override that if you do, uh, if you come across a joist that has deeper notches or bigger holes, it's possible that the joist is still okay, but then at that point you need an engineer to do some calculations and make sure it's okay. I'll show you a couple of quick pictures of examples of notching. Here's an area where you know, it was notched out for the uh, a pipe notched at the bottom almost all the way through. This is very common to see. Here's an area where it looks like the top of the joist was notched. Uh, there's a couple more uh, pictures here. I don't know why they opened so small. Here's this is very common to see where they notched this joist, um, the bottom of the joist uh, for this pipe. Again, this, this notch looks uh, way too large to be acceptable. Um, here's an example where the uh, top of the joist was uh, notched out. Uh, again, unacceptable, way more than uh, a sixth of the depth, and the length looked too long as well. Here's another example of where the whole joist was notched out uh, for a, a pipe, very common, commonly experienced. Um, here is a notching of the bottom of the joist. These, these notches look like about half the depth of the joist, which again would be unacceptable for code. Here's a, another example. All these pictures I just found on Google for disclosure where they notched all the way through. Again, this notch looks like almost half of the joist depth, not acceptable. And then uh, here's one where they notched the, the top of the joist. 
So all these notches that I just showed would be unacceptable and will require um, some sort of a repair that we'll talk about next. So I made this notch joist to demonstrate the behavior of a joist uh, that's been cut or notched. This notch would not be allowed, it's way too deep. Um, normally if you have a good floor joist with no notches and you load up the floor joist, the top of the floor joist is in compression and the bottom is in tension. If you were to notch out the bottom, you're taking away the ability of the joist to resist tension and when that floor joist gets loaded up, it wants to spread apart like that and it will eventually fail. Of course, whatever notch is left is, has to take up the new tension and compression and if there's not enough left, it will fail like this. A usual repair for a notch floor joist includes sistering alongside another joist of equal depth. They just come alongside with another 2x6 and they'll, they'll nail it or screw it alongside. The problem with that is usually a notch is there because you have pipes or wiring uh, coming through. You may have several electrical wires coming through. So you can't just sister alongside until you first remove the piping and all the wiring. It's very time consuming, very expensive. You might have to have a plumber come in. You might have to have an electrician come in. And when you sister the joist back, you'd have to reroute that plumbing. Um, another problem with sistering is sometimes it's hard to get a long, 12 foot long joist in place and get it over the foundation wall and get it over the beam and hammer it up straight. It's uh, very frustrating to do and challenging sometimes. So again, um, the bottom of the joist is in tension and when you notch it out, it does not have the ability to resist tension anymore and your joist will fail in this manner. Okay. Uh, here at Nolan Engineering, we designed a uh, repair that wouldn't require you to sister the joist or to remove your electrical wires or plumbing. Uh, it's basically a strap that will uh, be installed on the bottom of the joist or the side of the joist that will restore the uh, tension capability of the joist. will actually restore any uh, floor joist um, up to its full strength given that that floor joist was originally designed uh, appropriately and it wasn't overspanned to begin with. Um, there are a lot of straps on the market uh, but in our experience there is nothing that has the right number of screws, the right size screws the right thicknesses and the right material to actually restore the strength of the joist that are not marketed as a joist repair. So this has been specifically designed for a joist repair. Uh, what you would do is when you're in your basement usually and you have well, a notch in your joist, you would just come to the underside and screw the strap across the notch. Um, in this case, I'm going to do it here on the table. And I won't need to use all the screws for demonstration purposes because this joist will not be fully loaded. but this should be sufficient to show you the strength that's restored in the joist. I could even sit on this right now and the joist is perfectly strong, capable of taking um, my 160 pound weight. Um, if you were to use all the screws, the strap would be able to resist 3,000 pounds in tension, which would restore the strength of a two by 12 spanning 18 foot if it was based on 16 foot on center. So as you can see, you can uh, leave your pipes and your wires in place. You simply install the strap on the bottom side. If, um, if the joists were notched on the top, you could put the strap um, along the top like that. Um, if there was some other interference for some reason, you could also put the, the strap along the bottom like, like, like such. So if you're interested in these straps, uh, for now, um, here's our contact information. There's our website. 
Uh, the first one's the engineering company. The second one is for our products. There's also our phone number. We can ship these to wherever you are. They roughly run around $30 plus shipping. If you want to stay for the rest of the video, I'm just going to do some uh, calculations on the whiteboard to show you uh, how these things are designed to restore the full strength of the joist. Sticking around, we'll just briefly show you um, a little bit of engineering here. Most floor systems are designed for uh, 10 pounds per square foot uh, dead load and 40 pounds per square foot is the live load for a total of 50 pounds per square foot. So if you have a floor joist, a 2 by 12 can span around 17 and a half feet if spaced at um, 16 inches on center. So we have a floor joist, I have to switch colors here, and then you've got your, your loading on it, which is um, 50 PSF, but we have to adjust for joist spacing. If your joist is spaced at 16 inches on center, that's 1.33 feet. So that comes out to roughly 67, sorry, 66.7 pounds per linear foot along that 17.5 foot span of your joist. So the first thing you do is you calculate your end reactions, which is basically 66.7 times the span divided by 2. So at each end, you're supporting about 584 pounds. <clears throat> now wood, there's roughly four things that you look for. Bending stress, shear stress, crushing pressure, and uh, deflection. Uh, usually wood um, fails in deflection first, not any of the stresses. Right now, just to keep this short, we'll just talk about the bending stress. The bending stress is maximum at the center, zero at the end. So we need to figure out what the bending stress is at the center of this. So we'll just take this half. We already know this is 584 pounds. And um, we have our loading still here. So we have basically half of 17.5 times 67, uh, 66.7 pounds per linear foot, which happens to be 584, which acts at the center of that. If we do a 2 by 12, a 2 by 12 is actually 11.25 inches deep. We take our moment about the top, assuming it's been cut at the bottom. So we have, we'll call this positive, we have 584 pounds times this distance here, which is 4.375 feet. That acts that way. And then we have 584 pounds times this distance, which is half of 17.5, which is 8.75 feet. And that has to be resisted by the tension. This thing would want to rotate this way, counterclockwise, unless we had some tension stopping that. We'll call that tension T. And that tension T acts over a di distance of 11.25 inches, which is 9 0.9375 feet times T. We solve all this for T, you'll find that T equals 2,725 pounds. So in order for this joist not to break or move or rotate, the tension that must be developed in that strap that we just talked about has to be good for 2,725 pounds, which it is. And basically that's how it restores the full strength of the joist. Now if you have a shorter joist, um, less loading, it wouldn't achieve that, but that would be okay.